Welcome to Fridays in Football. He's Jaden. He's Tyler. I'm Ace. Uh, we're coming from you uh, live from the studios of the Clarion at Cleveland High School in Portland, Oregon. Um, <clears throat> here's a little trivia for you guys to start out. Uh, what does Julius Caesar and a certain MLS star have in common? Don't answer that just yet. We'll bring mm -hmm. that information to you uh, in just a little bit, and we'll get to all the big talk of this week and what a big week it was in soccer, all the way up from the professional levels down to the um, high school levels to amateur levels. Um, so let's get started. Jaden, what do we got on tap here uh, for today? Um, I think we should just start with a recap of the biggest game across Europe, Liverpool versus Man City. Liverpool came out 3-0 winners despite a relatively even game. As a fan of the Reds, I'm pretty happy with that result. What about you, Tyler? Um, yeah, I also support Liverpool and um, didn't have the chance to watch the game, but I watched the highlights, and it did seem pretty even, but the scoreline, I feel like, reflects the um, – it reflects Liverpool's strength in the defense and, yeah, their uh, lack of mistakes. Did, City. did anybody really take a look at Pep Guardiola during the game? I mean, he was he was just flummoxed, I think, just watching that game. Mm -hmm. it's like, it was almost like his hands were tied the whole time. Like, why can't I pull out Vincent Company or something <laughs> from the bench, you know? Like, he just he just looked like he was out of his, out of his mind in yeah. the game. Which I loved. Totally love that. <laughs> um, last year, they came to Anfield and played really defensively and came away with a nil-nil draw. This year, they tried to attack, but with a worse defense, and that really caught up to them as they conceded too early. And from then on, they were chasing the game. They had 18 shots, but only three of them were on goal, which I think is a tribute to how great the Liverpool defense was in running them into dead ends and just blocking their shots and just shutting them, shutting them down, really. Yeah, no problem. They, um, they they just have no problem on defense. Like that just hasn't been a problem at all. I think this year. Um, and you know, you think about um, you know, I don't even know if we have our full you know first complement of of defenders in there as far as center backs mm -hmm. go. You know, so. Dajun Lovren was playing, and he's like thirty three, maybe. I don't know. He thinks he's a lot better than the general <laughs> consensus, in my opinion. That's true. Mm -hmm. Well, um, <clears throat> is there any doubt that Liverpool is going to win the win the title this year? I mean, I um, I just I I just don't want to get my hopes up too high. You know, last time they were in it, um, Steven Gerrard slipped on the turf and and broke my heart. Mm -hmm. Is that that's not going to happen this year? Do you think? I, I don't know. At this point, I don't know. They've played twelve games. Um, they're at 34 points, number two, Leicester and Chelsea are at 26. I feel like there's not really a chance they can catch them. I feel like Leicester can't really repeat that uh, miracle season they had a few years ago. But, um, and I mean, M Manchester City are close behind uh, in third, but or in fourth. But at this point, I don't think they're stopping. They're there's a chance that they can stop Liverpool. Last year, around Christmas time, they were seven points ahead, and then they played at City and lost, making it four, and so they ended up coming back and winning it. But if you look what they did two years ago in the Champions League final, where they got to the final and lost, and they carried that form into next season, built on that, and then won the Champions League, I, I think they're going to do the same with the Premier League. I like what you're saying there, Jaden. I, um, I just hope so. Just There's this little gnawing thing in the back of my head that, you know, until that last day when they're raising the, raising the cup, I just, I don't know. Mm -hmm. City is always lurking for me, you know. If it's not City, I, I, I'm with you, Tyler. I don't know if anybody else can, can make up the ground. But yeah. City always seems to be, you know, ready, ready to pounce. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I agree. I think even though there's two teams ahead of them right now in uh, Leicester and Chelsea between Liverpool, uh, I think City are the best contenders to overthrow Liverpool, but I still, I don't know, I doubt that they can make it back. The big game next weekend is Chelsea 
um, traveling to the Eddie had to take on City, top four matchup. What do you think is going to happen there, Tyler? Um, I don't know. I've been liking. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. I've been liking uh, the way Chelsea has been playing, especially with Christian Pulisic. But um, obviously, he's injured at the moment. He didn't get the call up for the U.S. national team due to this injury and um i haven't heard anything if he'll be back i think he's a very key player for them at the moment um but manchester city i feel like just the way that they play and they'll just be eager to bounce back from that defeat to liverpool pretty humiliating for them and um i think they'll uh take it take i think they'll take that one you got a score prediction for that one? Um, hmm. I'm going to say 2 1, Man City. Mm. Yeah, I, I think you might be right there. I think, like I said, I, I fear City more mm-hmm. than anything. Chelsea, Chelsea's been playing great. Um, Jaden, I think you had some stat in there where Chelsea, I don't know, maybe you could look in there how they're doing against the top six. Um, but they've been pretty competitive, and they've been playing well. Pulisic is, is going out of his mind. Um, and I think uh, maybe just a little bit of rest, you know, with, with Pulisic, he'll be back. And um, I actually think they're going to shock City. They're going to go in there, and, and it'll be um, – maybe this isn't such a shocker, but I, I'm going to go with uh, a 2-2 draw. Pulisic with the brace. That's my prediction. He's been amazing. I mean, let's talk Pulisic. Yeah. Why, you know, it was amazing that he didn't even start the year, you know, like he was on the bench. Um, you know, it, it probably probably gave him a little come down, you know. He's always been the wonder kid. And now, uh, you know, he had to come off the bench, and then he started producing off the bench. He was scoring goals, assists, and then with that kind of production, Lampard could not keep him out. Now... How do you keep him out of the starting lineup? I mean, he's just he's just been amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, if you look at Liverpool, what they did with Fabinho last year when they signed him, he didn't really play for the first, like, month and a half, really. And then he started getting worked in the system, got used to it, and now he's a one of the best defensive midfielders in the world, arguably. So you see that? That's kind of when... Um, I mean, Pulisic... Where does he really play? You know, like for he's is he kind of on the wing for Chelsea? Is that yeah? I believe left wing, but I've also seen him switch over to the right. I think, and I think I don't know his position might be kind of like fluid. Yeah, I think. I mean, he he just kind of pops up anywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, to me, he's kind of like a a really good ten. Yeah, and um, you know. I think, you know, message to Burhalter. Yeah. Um, maybe you should play Pulisic as a 10, you know. Mm-hmm. Like he's having success at Chelsea. Yeah, maybe you should, you know, have that same kind of position on the national team. But I mean, we've talked about this before with Burhalter. Um, he just has his own system, and then he's going to try and make people fit wherever that system, you know, has that particular player. And it just hasn't been working. But... I would build my team around Pulisic and then figure out the rest of the pieces because he's just he's been phenomenal. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, as far as it goes with Burhalter, I think he's I don't know going to continue to be sort of stubborn with um, trying to implement his his system, and I just don't think that's going to go well. Like as we saw with the. Um, humil- humiliating loss to Canada, which really should not have been like any trouble at all, but turned out to be the opposite. Um, I think with like we have a we have the match um, rematch against against Canada coming up, and I believe on a, I I think Friday, and I don't know depending on how that goes if it goes the same way the previous one went, I feel like they just have to get rid of him like we just need at this point a coach that'll yeah I I agree build a team around Pulisic because he's by far the most talented player on the team and if he's in the right position I feel like he'll he makes everyone else like 
like drastically better and that's just what we need what we what we need right now i think it's just so sad that in this new competition that means virtually nothing a must we have a must win game at home to canada yeah. like are you serious like how far has this program dropped since the world cup in 2014 and like we have to win both our next two games against Canada and Cuba if we want to win our Nations League group, and that's just unacceptable for a team with the pedigree of USA. Like we should be up there with, ideally, like we are in women's soccer, mm-hmm. competing at the highest level and competing for World Cups, and we are nowhere near that. And I think Berhalter has no idea what he's doing. He's a club coach, and he doesn't know how to adapt, and it's just unacceptable. Well, yeah, I agree with uh, with you guys. Like, this is this is it for me. Like, I mean, this is this is critical time because you know the World Cup cycle will be coming up soon. Um, we, we haven't really seen any progress, you know. And he's he was named coach what a year and a half ago mm-hmm. or something like that. And you know, I, it's terrible. But I'm almost losing interest in the men's team. Like, yeah. I, I'm a soccer fan through and through, and I'm starting to lose interest because he's losing me you know like we're not getting results we're not getting big wins and um you know worse we're not seeing progress so i i'm with you like this is the next two games are critical like Mm -hmm. if he he can't if he can't get that you know show some results and without pulisic you know i don't know it almost reminds me of what's going on at arsenal where there's just no real concept and no real plan going forward and it's just it's not good yeah um what else going on in the premier league uh you know anything else that we need to be aware of Uh, rising teams surprise teams um you know teams that uh or players that that we should uh, think about um well leicester city as i mentioned before are in second place tied with chelsea Um, at 26 points and if you look at their goals against they actually have the best performing defense in the league um, and second best offense in the league and like right behind Man City and um, I don't know like I certainly didn't expect that going into this season but um, I don't know did either of you guys expect Leicester to perform this way big signing over I, I really don't, exactly, I don't yeah. even know. I know they, they've had a couple of the same pieces, but I, I didn't expect it. I didn't see it coming. Ayuzi Perez? Not really from Newcastle. Mm-hmm. Um, the thing is, though, although they do have 29 goals this year in the Premier League, you have to remember that nine of them were against Southampton That's in true. that one game. Oh, wow. What did, they, did they walk off the field? I mean, <laughs> what, what the There heck? was... Um, lost so badly that they all donated a day's wages to charity. <laughs> wow. Wow, good. Maybe they could, uh, you know, find a way to, to, you know, at least not be uh, cones out there. My gosh. Wow. <laughs> um, well, that's cool. Yeah, Lester, I always love to see that. Um, you know, I don't think I'll ever forget their, their great run. But, mm-hmm. um, man. You know, they could be in the Champions League after this year. So yeah. That's, that's quite the quite the accomplishment. Yeah, and teams like United, Manchester United and Tottenham could not only be out of the Champions League spots, but also the Europa League spots at the end of the season. Uh, like, obviously, Manchester United moved up over the last uh, couple games. They're in seventh now. But Tottenham are still in 14th, which is terrible spot to be in for like the team that they have they have so much talent still and a great coach and I really just don't don't know what's I don't know going on with them right now like Mm -hmm. Jaden what are you to be fair though as much as as bad as Spurs and United have been everybody's been bad as far the big boys go and if you look at the table there is um four points between 15th place Everton and 5th place Sheffield United. So I feel like soon there's going to get some clarity. I think it's only a matter of time before Tottenham and Manchester United 
So just start getting results, and Arsenal too even. Just against these t small t smaller teams like Watford, Southampton, Norwich City, even Aston Villa, they're going to start getting results and pulling themselves into like the top eight and making some room, I think. What, um, you know, Erickson for Tottenham, he's, he's kind of been on the, you know, the, the transfer rumor mill. Um, and he's, he's kind of the guy always, I thought, that made that team go. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when a guy like that is maybe on the way out, that affects the team. So I don't know. What do you do? You think he's he's on his way out for sure? Or do you think um, think he sticks around and, and then the team gels? I think absolutely one hundred percent he will leave. If not this January, then in summer. His contract is up um, at the end of the season, and that he hasn't been able to sign. They haven't been able to sign him to a new one, and they're going to try to sell him on in January because then they can at least get maybe twenty million for him or a little bit. But, but if they don't, then he leaves on a free transfer, and no, nobody likes to see that happen to their team. Where do you think he might possibly go? Um, I think I think you could really ah, I think we could realistically see him end up at Juventus. We know they love the free transfers, and they love signing way too many midfielders, and mm -hmm. possibly even if he goes in the winter, we could see a Dybala Eriksson swap deal with money going with Eriksson too. Um, but yeah, I think that's that the most. That sounds par for the course for Juventus. You know, <laughs> sign uh, aging, you know, aging midfielders yeah. or players. Um, but they seem to have luck with it. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. All right. Is that wrapping up our uh, Premier League talk? Anything else on the on hmm. the agenda there? Not for me. I think that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll get to uh, maybe some, um, uh, you know, big matchups coming up right here after the international break. But, um, okay, uh, we didn't really want to talk about this, you know, but there happened to be a really big game not too long ago. Uh, yeah, Seattle taking on Toronto in the MLS Cup. Um, you kind of know where we're, we're coming from mm -hmm. here. Um, Except for that guy <laughs> over there, he's Mr. Sounder. Um, you know, I, I we talked about this last week. We, you know, I just felt like Seattle had too much offensive firepower, mm -hmm. and they were really in form, and they were at home. I just could not see them losing. Um, I, you know, as much as I wanted to see that happen, um, I just couldn't see it happening. And sure enough, they uh, they just dialed up the the goals in the second half. And, uh, and squeaked it out. So, <laughs> um, Jaden, what do you think, man? Another trophy for the Sounders. Uh, um, obviously, I'm very happy about it in the game. I think it's how a traditional final plays out. It's usually a really tight, gritty game up until the first goal goes in. If you look at the final three years ago when it went nil-nil to penalties, two years ago it was nil-nil, and then Toronto scored the first goal. Seattle had to open up their defense, try to get the equalizer, and then Toronto got their second, and that's really what happened in this one. Once Seattle scored off that own goal, Toronto had to go for it, and then they were easy. Yeah, they were able to get two more and seal it off. And then by the time Josie Alcindor scored, it was too little, too late, and they got a comfortable victory. I mean, we all know if Josie played, it probably would have been a different, you know, outcome. I think. I mean, let's let's be real, you know. Josie probably would have had a, a hat trick or something like that. And uh, Toronto would be waltzing out of the <laughs> But you guys are so lucky. I mean, you don't have to face Josie. Come on. I mean, they, who did who did Toronto have? They had, like, their number 10. Pozuelo. Pozuelo playing the number nine, you know. like, And they still almost scored, like, three goals in the first half. I mean – Guys got lucky. I mean, I'm, I'm just gonna throw that out there. I really, really hate to use this phrase, but okay, boomer. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, don't worry. This is just gonna light a fire under the Portland Timbers. Uh, organization. Exactly. I hope. I hope it lights a big old blowtorch because right now. I like it's crickets coming out of the, the Portland Timbers uh, mm -hmm. front office. You know what's going on. Um, you know there's a, there's a lot of guys they need to 
locked down. Um, what's going to happen with Valeri, of course? That's a big piece. Yeah. Personally, I think the like, first thing they do over this offseason is give Valeri what he wants because I feel like he's just such a big piece of this organization that if he, like – leaves or somehow like stays and doesn't get the dp spot and is unhappy then this next season will i don't know not work out that well for us yeah i it's like the elephant in the room you know Mm -hmm. um and i'm sure they're working on something we just we just don't you know who knows when we'll hear about it Mm -hmm. but um uh he's I agree. I mean, he's given us all kinds of great, you know, great victories and great moments and all that. But um, I, I actually think that you know maybe it's time to move on from him. Um, you know, as as painful as yeah. that is to say, but he just um, he's just not the same player that he was. And I almost think you can get the same amount of production out of him, you know, if he was coming off the bench. Mm-hmm. But, but I don't know if, you know, that's not what... It's not what he wants. It's not what he wants. Mm-hmm. You know, he wants to be the guy. So, you know, when it comes down to that, if if he could accept, you know, some lesser role, then I'd be like, you know, sweet, stick around, you know. But I don't know if he, do, if he would accept that. Yeah. Know? But, yeah, on to- like, on that topic, he, uh, like, if he were to leave... And like, if we weren't to give him the big, the big bucks, and he wanted to leave, I don't see a team in MLS that would pay him the money he wants, or a team elsewhere that would pay him the money that that he wants. So like, I don't know. Personally, I I see him staying next season. Like either way, I don't know. What kind of odds do you put on that? Um. <laughs> You know, anything can happen, but um, I think also you have to take into consideration his personal life. He, I don't know, he's such a, he loves Portland so much, and his daughter grew up here, and um, I feel like from what I've heard, his family's really happy here, and I don't think he really wants to move, but we'll see like there is a big decrease in pay if he doesn't get that dp spot that he wants so and obviously you can't blame him for um going where the money or he'll get the money so yeah absolutely i mean i i I do hope he gets the money Mm -hmm. you know like he deserves it um but as far as portland you know portland is concerned it's his it's just his role Mm -hmm. i think uh you know, it's tough to say because he had a good year, you know, like statistically he was he was up there in yeah. assists and was down in the in goals a little bit. And, um, you know, like but compared to other DPs, he was he was probably right up there, you know, in production. But I don't know if he, you know, he's just slowing down. And, yeah. and I don't know if he kind of really fits into what Gio wants to do mm-hmm. ultimately, which I think is more, you know, Four three three possession press you know that kind of stuff and you know if if Valeri's still around and he's a starter it's just another year where you know another year of the same like mm-hmm. and let's be maybe maybe the schedule was a little uh, you know wonky this year but honestly um, you know we're we're never really the front runner in the in the league you know yeah. always kind of middle of the road so i don't know yeah gee that all that mls cup talk turned into uh, portland <laughs> talk there, Jason. Uh, i don't know you, you were starting to you know fantasize about uh clint dempsey or something right? i don't know it's really nice to be above those kind of topics and to not have to think about what next and to just to already be at the top <laughs> yeah right well just don't get too complacent, okay? We'll, uh, we'll be we'll be coming after you. Mm-hmm. We still have sweet memories of of uh, you know last year when we beat you guys and OT, you know penalty kicks, all that stuff. But did you get a trophy for it? 
<laughs> no, but we got some warm fuzzies. Okay? <laughs> we, had, we had some good memories. But um, did you get some, a trophy for it? Sometimes that's better than a trophy. Got the Western Conference trophy. <laughs> If that means anything. Yeah, we have three of those. <laughs> You're just lucky you didn't have to face us because I think that would have that would have been the end of it right there for you guys. And but we beat the team that beat you. Yeah, but that doesn't mean anything. So yeah, it does. You're lucky you didn't face Portland. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's all good, man. It's all good. Um, so, yeah, anything else in MLS? Lots of, uh, lots of news in the MLS, I guess, now that we're on, on that topic. Mm-hmm. Um, None bigger than uh, the Z-Man, um, and I'm not talking Zarek Valentin here, I'm talking Zlatan. Uh, I guess you guys heard the news. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, that was the answer to the, uh, to the quiz, uh, the beginning opening quiz, which was, uh, you know, what does Julius Caesar and a certain MLS player have in common? Um, <clears throat> uh, they... Julius Caesar and Zlatan, they they came, they saw, they conquered. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you guys saw that in his, yeah. in his tweet or his Instagram. He, that's what he said. Mm-hmm. He, was, he was out. But um, did Zlatan conquer? Yeah, what I don't did know. he win here? Uh, f- ask any center back, did he conquer? <laughs> I think so. What, 53 goals in 53 games, something like that? Yeah, no, he didn't win any trophies, though. Oh, you are stuck on the trophy. <laughs> what? What is it with the trophies? You probably kept all your, you know, U8 and U9 trophies up on your on your bureau or something. My gosh. It's time to put them away. Mm-hmm. You're not going to miss Lata. Mm. I, I think it is fun have it, having him in the league just for the entertainment value. It's always, I don't know, fun to see him scoring those crazy goals. He's, I don't know. I'm I'm really interested as to where he'll go next because I don't know if he'll go back to a big European club because I think he could still be successful in Europe and um, obviously he had that uh, little tease that he said he was going to go to Spain but it was really just some I forget if it was some like it was a partnership with the gambling company yeah yeah. <laughs> And there's, I've heard, been a lot of Italian teams um, in contact with him or who want him to sign for them. So I'm just really interested to see where he'll go next. I remember, I think it was about a year and a half ago now, almost two years, but when he first came over, the Galaxy announced it was a signing on like Wednesday or Thursday. Um, It was at the end of the March International break before the World Cup. Um, and then he got on there, he got with them on Thursday, trained on Friday, jet lagged, and then he played in the LA Derby on uh, Saturday, which was one of the best games of soccer I've ever seen. He came on in the 80th minute, down 3 1, after being down 3 0, I might add. But they scored the second, and then he had that absolutely amazing f- half volley from mm-hmm. like 40 yards out over Tyler Miller. I don't think anyone's ever going to forget that. And then he ended up scoring the winner in the 90th minute, and it's just. That's one of those perfect moments that only Zlatan could bring to that mm-hmm. to us, and I think we're really going to miss that next year. Yeah, I think we freaked our neighbors out during that game. We were yelling so loud <laughs> <laughs> when we were watching the game, and uh, we had, I remember we had the windows open and they were just freaking out. Um, yeah, I just, I, it's amazing. Like two years, he's he's given us like incredible goals. Like, mm-hmm. you know, he's scored incredible goals his whole career, but. I mean, just add these to the bunch, you know, because, uh, you know, his my favorite probably is the karate one that he did against Toronto. Um, was uh, that his 500th? Yeah, it, it was. Yeah, yeah. It's like, is he going to get a tap in for his yeah. 500th goal? No, he's going to, the ball comes in and he, you know, does a karate mm-hmm. kick and puts it in. Like, um, that, and that was, that's just amazing. Amazing yeah. player. I love that guy. I always have. Mm -hmm. I think there's also that factor of um, just having big players like that, like being able to go see them live. Like I actually got to go to a game where the Timbers played LA and see Zlatan. Zlatan, And I don't know, that's just a really cool moment to see him. Like I've 
been a fan of soccer for a while and seeing him play at like PSG and Manchester United and um, all the teams he had before that, like Barcelona and Inter. And um, I don't know, it's just re- cool to see like big stars like that, that you've grown up watching like in real life. And Yeah, uh, definitely. I mean, uh, one of the guys um, I remember watching early on um, was uh, Thierry Henry when mm-hmm. he came. I mean, he was another guy like, oh my gosh, this guy is so good. Like, he's got to be, I mean, he was so smooth. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. <laughs> and, um, but now look at, he, you know, look at him. He, um, you know, I guess he had a failed run at, at Monaco, and I don't know what he's been doing since, but yeah. he must have been, you know, lobbying uh, Don Garber to come <laughs> back because now he's he's uh, going to manage Montreal. Apparently. Yeah. His spell at Monaco was so bad. <laughs> when he left, they were, like, in the bottom half of the league, uh, but then – or when he joined Monaco, rather. But then when he left, they were in the relegation zone. And a team like Monaco – in 2017, they made the Champions League semifinals. Mm-hmm. To be fair, they did lose pretty much their whole team. Some great starts, Kylian Mbappe, <coughs> Bernardo Silva, so many more. But um, for a team at that pedigree to be in the relegation zone, I don't know if I've ever seen that bad a managerial performance over that long of a stretch. He mm-hmm. did so bad that they hired their coach that they had fired the same season to come back and replace right. him. Yeah. <laughs> but I think... Having a new start in MLS, I think that's a good place to learn. Look at Jesse Marsh, um, old Red Bulls coach. He um, went over to become an assistant at Red Bull Leipzig last year. Now he's the manager at uh, RB Salzburg in Austria. We're doing pretty good in the Champions League this year and in their um, own first division. So I think it could be a good um, stepping stone for him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. What about, um, you know, some of these guys, you know, they. I, I love a good redemption story like anybody, um, you know, so right, he had the failed, failed times at uh, Monaco, you know, good luck at, at Montreal. I mean, they, they haven't made the playoffs, I think, for a couple of years. They 2016, yeah. they had that, lost to Toronto in the semis. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and this year they had, uh, I thought they'd make it, but, you know, they had um, Piotti, got injured, yeah. you know, that kind of derailed their plans. Um, but I always thought they played pretty well, and they, they got some good good players. So it'll be interesting to see, I, you know, see if he can make a difference or not. I, I would think he'll be able to attract, you know, some good players to come over. I mean, and that's all you need is one or two good recruits, you mm-hmm. know, and you're, you're right in it. Yeah. Um, so good luck to him, uh, but he's – what a great player. Um, what else? What else we got on the MLS Cup news? Um, Darlington Nagby, within the last few days recently, uh, was transferred to Columbus, Columbus Crew, from Atlanta to, I'd assume his main draw from there is to reconnect with Caleb Porter and Also, I'm pretty sure, like, most of his family is from Columbus. That's where he grew up and went to college. And, um, yeah, so I'm a little bummed he didn't come back to Portland since he was one of my favorite players. Um, But good for him. I'm glad he's not on Atlanta anymore since, I don't know, it's hard to (laughs) support Atlanta. I hear you on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I maybe he just didn't fit, um, you know, there as well. It was he kind of had a strange role. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe it was maybe it was the right role for him. You know, he's he's really good at shuttling, you know, the ball and all that. And all he all he had to do was just get it to Al Marone mm-hmm. you know, last year or you know Joseph Martinez. So I mean, he did a great job. Next year in Columbus. Um, you know, they'll be expecting playoffs, you know, mm-hmm. with, with his arrival. I don't know if they're going to get any other players. Yeah. But, um, I think immediately they become legit, you mm-hmm. know, because I, I think 
he's going to solidify any midfield that he joins. Yeah. So good for Columbus. I'm with you. You know, weaken Atlanta any way you can. I'd mm-hmm. love to see those guys. Yeah. Um, you know, come back to earth a little bit. So, yeah. Um, what else here? It looks like. So do we have uh, Inter Miami's coming into the league next year? Is that right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Along with Nashville. Okay, so are they in the Eastern Conference? Um, or, or is there any, uh, is there any, uh, I don't know, different different setups? I guess they're in the Eastern Conference. Now. Miami will inevitably be in the Eastern Conference because of their location, but I've seen they could put Nashville in the West, which personally I don't really want to see. I think they should just move someone like Chicago over or whoever's the westernmost of the eastern teams. Mm-hmm. You, not long ago, um, Sporting Kansas City used to be in the Eastern Conference, but they moved over because of expansions in the east. So I think we could see the same thing again. But I really hope it's even. Because if you have in 26 teams, it's fair to do it 13 and 13. There's no point in doing it 12 and 14. Yeah. Yeah. Right, and that's just... You know, you're gonna have a better record too. You know, with with the teams in the East, they're gonna mm-hmm. be playing the expansion teams twice. So, yeah. Um, so presumably they'll have a little better record. Um, but welcome to the league, mm-hmm. um, David Beckham. One of my faves. I mean, that's that's gonna be cool when you know they come in the league. So it's exciting. MLS is, uh, you know, it's growing. Um, I came. I grew up in Sacramento, so it's mm-hmm. kind of exciting to see Sacramento come into the league. Too. Yeah. Um, I won't be a Sacramento fan, <laughs> but if I'm ever down there, mm-hmm. you know, I'll check it out. Um, so it's exciting to see the league grow. Um, but I, you know, part of me uh, doesn't want it to see it grow too much, and it's still going to have what a couple more teams added. Yeah, they're going, got, I think they're going to thirty. Yeah, 30. Like Austin, <coughs> FC, and... St. Louis. St. Louis. And Sacramento. I think Sacramento. those are the three that are confirmed. Mm-hmm. And then there's going to be one more after that, I yeah. think, for the 30th, whoever that's going to be. Mm-hmm. I'm really concerned about the dilution of talent. Because mm. n- what other league really has 30 teams? Because it works in other American sports like baseball, hockey, basketball, football, because you have all the best players in the world all playing in the same league. Yeah. But you don't really have that here. In fact, you don't really have any of the best players in the world. So the good players that you do have are now going to be spread out, and which means there'll be more, like, not great, like people who came out of college who wouldn't really pl- be playing professional soccer anywhere else. And I think overall the quality is going to get worse, and we're going to need to recruit better people from elsewhere to make up for that. Yeah, I do. I worry about that too. Um I mean, you can see you can see the bottom feeder teams in you know in the Premier League. You mm-hmm. know, they they just can't compete, and um, that's seventeen. You know, that's eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. You know, we're talking thirty teams yeah. in the MLS. You know, you can like Portland this year. They actually, I thought they had some decent depth, mm-hmm. but when they were starting out, like they they had maybe ten good guys. You know. If that yeah and, and um, any sub they brought in was was just not good enough now they actually have some good depth but you're right um, there's dilution you know the more more teams that come in is going to be even more dilution so I I'm, I'm a little cautious about that but excited for for you know new teams coming in because it's exciting <laughs> <laughs> all right hey moving on um, this is uh, we're going to talk about high school soccer now. Tyler uh, is our our resident expert um, <laughs> on the varsity team, and they just had a great year. Mm-hmm. And um, what a game! Uh, Tuesday night, it was set up um, in the semifinal round. It was a rematch with Franklin, and I think everybody was there. Yeah, except, except the mayor. You know, like where were you, mayor? <laughs> Come on. Um, everybody was there. It was it was electric. Yeah, the crowd was amazing. I've never seen a crowd that big for any Cleveland event. It was really just I don't know, incredible to see that many people come out to support. Yeah. 
um, unfortunately, um, it didn't work out. Mm -hmm. and, um, uh, what a, I don't know how else to characterize it except, you know, uh, I, I felt bad. I can't imagine how you guys felt. And, uh, you know, it was, just, it was too bad because mm -hmm. you guys had a really good team. And, um, you know, I guess credit to Franklin. Yeah. Um, they, they played really well. Uh, especially, you know, they they got their goals when they mm -hmm. needed to get them, and they they did a good job. Yeah, they were they got the early goal off uh, just like a breakaway, and then there was a guy open at the back post, and then after that, it was basically all Cleveland just trying to get one back on them, um, pretty much the entire game. Um, we sort of lost momentum in the first half until probably five minutes before the end of the first half where we kind of went on a run. And I feel like if, I don't know, we just had a few more minutes, we could have put a goal on them. But then uh, we came back um, in the second half flying and we got a lot of chances. And then finally Saul, uh, tapped one in with a few minutes to go and everyone went wild and that was that was just a great moment and um yeah he sent it to overtime and I don't know we all believe that um we could do it but I don't know we got we had a lot of chances but Franklin snuck one in on us and then I don't know from there we were just left trying to scrape one together and then just couldn't do it but yeah it was a great season and i don't know something i'll never forget i was taking photos at the game and mm -hmm. when we scored that goal with like three minutes left you could just feel it coming for the whole second half yeah, and then yeah. i completely abandoned forgot about everything <laughs> that i was supposed to do instead of taking photos i ran over it started high-fiving i remember i hugged the principal mm -hmm. <laughs> i got so excited and <laughs> Yeah, that it's, was that was a great. It's moment. one of those great moments that only sports can bring, mm -hmm. and it's just really bum. It's it's a bummer that we didn't win the game. Yeah, I felt like if there was going to be a team that scored in extra time, it was going to be us because mm -hmm. in soccer, what generally happens is if you score a goal and then you sit back and defend and defend and defend, eventually that ca catches up to you. You can't do that forever. And as soon as the first one ends, the uh, as soon as the first one goes in, typically it's only a matter of time until the second one does because you have all the momentum. And mm -hmm. it was really against the run of play and just just sad. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, all I can say is thank goodness for our goal because the crowd was just, it was just expecting one, mm -hmm. you know? And, yeah. And it was, it was just, and when it came, like you said, it just brought the house down. Um, high fives, hugs, um, tears of joy. Um, and yeah, I think um, there were a couple of times I thought there were they were going in. Mm -hmm. uh, there was, uh, I think Mo had a, a pretty decent shot um, attempt, and then um, and then with about a minute and a half left, I think, and then um, and then another guy came down the left side and put in a, a nice shot, but mm -hmm. it just went wide of the goal. Yeah, and um, and uh, but you know tip of the cap to their keeper mm -hmm. he played he made a couple of really nice saves that i don't know if any other guy was going to make those saves yeah. you know he, he he had a great game he had a good game um but uh you know on the whole um you know you guys you guys played really well but you guys played fun soccer to mm -hmm. watch, very fun to watch you know the way you the way you worked it around um, you know, it wasn't long ball or anything like that. It was, you know, it's real methodical and, and then, you know, you used your speed to your advantage. Um, just, just really fun soccer to watch, mm -hmm. but didn't get the, yeah. didn't get unfortunately to go. Yeah. Not, yeah. Yeah. But good luck to Franklin in the finals, but I don't know. Personally, I'll be supporting summit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm really torn because I have a few friends on the Franklin team and I want them to win but mm -hmm. I also just like I don't want them to have that satisfaction yeah like I would feel so much better about it if they ended up losing too yeah I um 
I, I have no comment. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, you know, anything can happen. Summit last year, they they went all the way, I guess, and lost to Jesuit. Mm -hmm. So you know, they've got revenge on their mind yeah. or redemption. I don't know, but. Um, you know, they, they certainly are going to be pretty tough opponent, I would imagine. Definitely. For Franklin, it's probably going to be a really good game. Mm -hmm. You guys go in at all? Or? Um, I don't know. We'll see. I might be camping, but even if I'm not, I probably, I don't know, won't go out there. Yeah. Um, well, I was I'm going to the duck game. Mm -hmm. I was pretty, I was probably going to miss your guys, you know, if you were in the final. Yeah. So I was going to go to the duck game, but... Uh, um, anyway, yeah. Um, any more thoughts on the high school season? Um, I don't know. I just, it was a great season and, um, really fun. We were top scorers in the state and obviously that's something that we can take away and look back on, um, and made it to semifinals and I don't know I just want to thank all the fans that came out to support because I don't know that meant a lot and I've never seen again I've never seen that many people at a Cleveland sporting event and that really meant a lot I'd like to add that that quarterfinal game against Reynolds with mm -hmm. the two best offenses in the state oh yeah was one of the best soccer games I've ever seen offensively the mm. defense was awful <laughs> um but there was so many great goals and mm. the result was great too 6-4 and it was just such a great game I've never seen anything that in my life yeah. anything like that in my life yeah that was a fantastic game yeah um just the excitement around campus was great to see you know mm -hmm. like um we don't always get teams you know that are um do well in state yeah and, um, I don't know, somehow uh, everybody just kind of latched on to it, you know, and, mm -hmm. and we had all kind of fun, you know, there was fun stuff happening, uh, you know, Coach Yoder um, looking like Yoda, <laughs> you know, in that advertisement. <laughs> Too bad we don't have something to show yeah. you, but, um, you know, super fun to see, and everybody's excited, and uh, um, I, that's what I'll remember, too, you know, mm -hmm. just kind of the excitement that was happening, um, so... Glad that that you guys had that experience. Yeah, it's great. Um, all right, so we're uh, I think we're getting down to um, anything else here. We got La Liga Euro qualifiers and um, the Concacaf Nations League. Um, anybody want to jump in on that stuff? Um, well, last game that Barcelona played, Messi scored a hat trick. <laughs> Scored a penalty to tie the game and then scored two free kicks, which is, I don't know, just in incredible. I think he's possibly the best free kick taker of all time. I've, I don't know, haven't really watched soccer for long enough to sort of like uh, comment on all the older players, but from what I've seen, he is definitely the top best free, free kick taker of all time. and. I don't know, in my opinion, the best player of all time. I don't know. I saw this stat so far this season. He's has he's converted 40% of his free kicks. It's almost <sighs> to the point where if he has a free kick from like 18 to 28 yards, 30 yards, it's like a disappointment if he doesn't score. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What was that one he had? Um, was it the... What was the cup last year that he he scored a free kick goal? It was the Champions League against it Liverpool? It was it was the South American Cup. Copa America. Uh, oh, Copa America. Yeah, maybe it was two years ago. Oh, the free kick against the U.S. Yeah, or, yeah. It was like back in 2016. He mm -hmm. couldn't have done it any better. Yeah. Like, yeah, he's his. Uh, his technique is amazing. Mm -hmm. Also, that one against Liverpool last year from like 35 yards out. Yeah. Absolutely. Nobody had any chance of it. Mm -hmm. um, Barca, Real, Atleti on the right track. Um, <coughs> are they? 
I don't know. It's been a really slow start for everyone this year, but all three of them have really been spared by the fact that no one's taking the league by storm. Mm -hmm. Like Barca, three losses in 12 games. For their standards, that's not up to par at all. But right now, all three of them, Barca and Real Madrid at 25 points and Atleti and Sevilla at 24, it's really anyone's league. But with Barca and Real Madrid having a game in hand against each other, um, I think that Classico is going to have a big determination in which one of the two really takes control of the league. Yeah, I really don't know. Um, what's Who's in first right now? Um, Barcelona and Real Madrid are tied at 25 points. Well, that's nice. You know, yeah. usually, usually it's one or the other mm -hmm. way ahead, you know, and then – so it's nice. I'm mm -hmm. glad to see that yeah. at least. I, you know, everybody had high hopes for Atletico. Yeah, I mean, they're not – they're they one point behind – Tied in, uh, well, they're three and three, and Sevilla is number four, and both tied at twenty-four points, one behind. I think for Atleti, they have a really young, exciting team, and it's not really going anywhere because they just had a massive overall or overhaul, overhaul in the summer. Um, brought in so many new players, got rid of Griezmann, Godin, Lucas Hernandez, so many more, and. I think we could see them win another Liga in the next two, three years. Yeah, it might take some time. Mm -hmm. um, all right, Euro qualifiers. What do we got going on in there? Anything coming up? Uh, is that That's this weekend, right? Mm -hmm. It's Thursday through Sunday. The first round of them got off today. We had action in Group A, Group B, and Group H. In Group A, England 7-0 um, victory over Montenegro. Oh which cemented their spot in the, the summer's tournament. Mm. And then uh, Kosovo somehow actually were in with a shot. They were ahead 1-0 over Czech Republic today, but thanks to two goals um, from the Czech in past the 70th minute, they were able to reverse that and are now safely into the tournament next summer. And Kosovo will go to the playoffs. But I think it would be really cool to see a nation like that you know where Kosovo is? Yeah. I, I don't, at least. Do you, Tyler? <laughs> um, no. What's the population Are they there? Eastern Europe? Yeah, it's it's part of, um, well, Yugoslavia. It's yeah, yeah. part of Yugoslavia, and then it broke into six different mm -hmm. um, nations. Another you know the population? Uh, probably less than Oregon. Yeah. You know, or maybe the same. I don't know. Imagine if we took an Oregon team and had them try to qualify for the Euros. Yeah, that would exactly. be incredible. Obviously, like, uh, Iceland last Euros were a very exciting team to watch. I don't know what their population – like, they have a population of, like, 100,000 or something, maybe even less or something mm -hmm. like that. And they made it to, like, the quarterfinals, I think. Speaking of Iceland, they um, their nil nil draw with Turkey today saw them being – eliminated from the tournament at least for this part they could still qualify for the playoffs if results go their way um elsewhere in the tournament i have no idea it is so incredibly complicated how the playoff system works but mm. with the nation's league and such but they're still in with the shot but it could it could be hard for them um anybody that's good that's missing you know it looks like they might be out um mm. In uh, Group B today, Serbia beat Luxembourg 3-2, but thanks to Portugal's 6-0 victory over Lithuania, assuming Portugal win um, against uh, Luxembourg on Sunday, uh, Serbia should have to go through the playoffs if they want to qualify. And they were in the, um, yeah, were in the World, World Cup, Cup. Yeah, yeah, last they got some time around. Players. Hmm. What about Croatia? Croatia are sitting at first in Group E. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really exciting group. So many teams in with a shot there. you got Croatia, Hungary, Slovakia, and Wales at 14, 12, 10, and 8, respectively. But Slovakia and Wales each with a game in hand. Mm. Anything could happen there. Yeah. Mm. It's always nice to see Bales do well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's a very fun player to watch. Especially when he's not with Real Madrid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, free bails. You know, yeah. 
get that guy somewhere where he's wanted. Mm-hmm. I feel like he could do well in the Premier League. Maybe back with Tottenham. I don't know. Send him to Manchester United. Mm. That's a, you know that's you know I'm full disclosure here. When I first started watching the Premier League, like that's why I like Tottenham because mm-hmm. they. Bale would just like run down the sideline with the ball like yeah. 20 yards. I'm like, dang, that guy's fast, you know. So I became a fan, mm-hmm. and then, um, then you know, that turned into Liverpool love. So, um, yeah, Tottenham was my first love. Mm-hmm. But Bale, yeah, I think I think he should. He should. Uh, Premier League sounds good. Yeah, that probably would fit him. You know, fit him best. Yeah. Yeah, the only other place I could see him going really is maybe PSG. I mean, they have the money, but I feel like he'd rather play in the Premier League with, I don't know, he speaks the language there, and I don't know, maybe, yeah, back to his really home area, I don't know. What you just brought up with the money is, Mm -hmm. for that reason, I think he can't go to Tottenham, and the only place he really can go is Manchester United, but Mm -hmm. it's just so hard for him to get out because... He's happy with staying at Real Madrid and doing nothing and getting paid six hundred uh six hundred thousand dollars a week. Yeah. And who wouldn't be? But no one really wants to take a risk on such a high injury prone player. Cause the second he goes down injured, you're paying him all that money to sit on the bench for you. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Well, stay tuned for that. Yeah. All right. Um USA. Uh, we talked a little bit about this already, but they're in the CONCACAF Nations League. Jaden, explain what that means, because our listeners probably have no idea what the Nations League uh, tournament's all about. Um, we saw them do this in Europe last year. They basically divided the 41 members of CONCACAF into three leagues. Uh, the first one with 12, the second with 16, and then the last one with 13. Um, and then... Each league is divided into four groups, and then they have a relegation and promotion system. So if you finish last in your group in League A, you get relegated to League B. And if you finish first in your group in League B, you get promoted. And the same with League B and, or League C. Um, but the goal of this is just to get these lower countries like Bahamas and Belize and Cayman Islands more games and just to eliminate meaningless friendlies and just mm. have more competition even though, for what purpose? What are they really competing for? Yeah. Um, that's a, yeah, that's a dilemma. I'm, I'm all for no more friendlies, but yeah. wouldn't it be better to play Argentina or something, you know, mm-hmm. than... Uh, I, <coughs> In my opinion, they really need to combine Guyana, you know. uh, the South American or North American regions. Just make mm-hmm. it one big region, and then... You could have a huge Nations League, get rid of the Gold Cup, make it, have everybody play in the Copa America, and just give these countries like USA, Mexico, and Costa Rica some meaning. Because right now, they only play each other in games. Like, USA's only real meaningful game in the past two years since they didn't qualify for the World Cup was the Gold Cup final versus Mexico. They were getting to the final was easy. The whole tournament was easy. They've just been playing friendlies up until then. And they just need more competition because when you ha- play these meaningless friendlies, like before the World Cup, they played France and they were actually ahead for nearly the whole game. Ended up giving a late equalizer uh, and the game ended 1 1. But they play these friendlies and they get a result and everyone's like, oh, we're on to something. This is it. This is the new USA. And then we'll go lose to Canada and it's mm-hmm. just, we're not going anywhere. And this tournament ultimately, it doesn't help our development at all. Yeah, well, it sounds like what you're saying. If we if we add, um, you know, if we jump into the uh, Sud America Cup or whatever, you know, this could be the whole. This could be like Euros, you mm-hmm. know, the Euro tournament. We've got North and South America, Central America. That would that would be awesome. Yeah. I, uh, let's make this happen somehow. And then uh, there's about like forty some teams in the North American region, but like I said, only three real teams. If you add the 10 real teams of South America, you will almost have a similar system like they have over in Europe with the international football. So you can have, like, their Nations League actually is competitive. But, like, there was a group in that of Netherlands, France, Germany, which is mm-hmm. amazing, versus a group of 
United States, Canada, and Cuba. Mm. Like, it's just, what's the point? Yeah. Um. But if you make it like Brazil, Argentina, United States, then you're talking, then you have something going. Mm-hmm. Um, well, <clears throat> let's move on. Or uh, are we looking forward to that game, USA versus Canada? Is that our is that our match of the week here? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, but I'm also a little worried because I don't know, just because nothing's really changed since the last game against Canada, and also no pool sick. So I don't know. I guess there's not really anything to lose on um, in terms of like I don't know. Burr Halter's position, like, we can only get better, I guess. <laughs> Maybe not, but I don't know. Like, we really should not ha- be having trouble beating Canada, whereas they easily beat us, and I don't know, it's just ridiculous. Um, As I said before, it's really sad that this has become a big game for us, mm-hmm. but... What typically happens is big game or big teams win big games at home when it matters. And like two years ago, before that Trinidad and Tobago defeat, we beat Panama 4 0, and it looked like we were going to qualify for the World Cup. If you look at Manchester United this year, um, they were having an awful season. Then they had Liverpool over and gave them a really hard time, and they were, you could say, lucky to get a draw. Liverpool were. So I think this will be USA's game, and I'd be shocked to see anything less than 4-0, 5-0. With you there. Yeah, I'd love to see that. Yeah, because let's do that. Because in CONCACAF, in North America, we're still a big team. All right. And barring a catastrophe, we always will be. Mm-hmm. Okay, guys, so... Um, we're into the mixed bag now. This means uh, anything goes, really. Could be, uh, you know, looking back on the week, your favorite play, your favorite uh, or top player of the week. Um, uh, match you're looking forward to. I guess we already talked about that. I don't know, mixed bag. Um, what, do we, what do we got? Hmm. I guess a match I'm looking forward to is Chelsea versus Man City. Obviously, I don't know. I'm not huge fans of either club, but I I don't know. It'll just be a really fun game to watch, I hope. And uh, it'll ob- obviously influence the Premier League table drastically, wh- whatever the result. I'm a fan of anyone who's playing City. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I'd like to give a shout-out to Cristiano Ronaldo. Last week in the Champions League, got subbed off in the 80th minute before Juventus scored the winner. And then at the weekend, got subbed off in the 55th minute for Paulo Dybala, who scored the winner, vindicating the substitution. And then in the qualifier against Lithuania, to be fair, it is against Lithuania, but he scored a hat trick. And that second goal he scored with the first time curler was absolutely amazing. And props to him. He's now at... 98 goals, 11 behind Ali Dai, for who has 109 for the all-time international goals record, and I think it's only a matter of time. It would be really, really cool if it would be hard, but hypothetically, he could score. Um, his he could break the record in the Euro, which would be it's cool to see. Yeah, mm. I could, I could see that. I could see him having a great Euro and going off and scoring a ton of goals. Um, I love the Euros, man. Mm-hmm. As, as much as almost as much as the World Cup, yeah. it's so much fun. Um, well, let's see. I um, I'm gonna have to go with uh, favorite play was uh, was the goal uh, Saul scored. Yeah. Um, you know, five minutes ago, still a ton of pressure. Mm-hmm. Ball came over the top, and his his touch was so good. You know, touch to bring it down and then um, slot it home. It was. It was amazing play, um, and he'd been working so hard all game oh, yeah. to get a goal. So uh, that's that's my play of the week right there. Um, all right, I think that wraps it up, guys. All right. This week uh, it is uh, when it, Fridays in football um, coming out on 
the 15th. It's um, so tune us in every week. We're coming at you from Cleveland High School, uh, the Clarion Newsroom. Um, I'm Ace. That's Jaden. That's Tyler. Thanks for uh, listening. <laughs>